Today is Tuesday, April 16th. The Yankees are still in Toronto. We're talking to Aaron Boone, manager of the Yankees. Let's do it. Let's talk Yanks. <clears throat> talk Yanks with old John Boy. John Boy and Jake. Recaps galore. Weekly no, awards. Stat lines, steaming hot takes. Get your Yankees news from these two fine dudes. It's time. Hello and welcome to Talking Yanks, brought to you by SeatGeek. Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Jimmy. BBD is here, producing away. Jake, missant, an empty chair, vanished, gone. Uh, Jake had uh, an appointment that ran late, so he's not here. So I just ran the Boone chat, bantering with Boone solo. First time I think we've done that. Jake had some good questions prepped on the sheet. A really good trivia question by Jake Prep that Boone refused or did not refuse to answer. You'll have to find mm. out. Uh, and, you know, I wanted to get into it with Boone about the defense and about some of the relief pitching. And I I, was, I wasn't sure how much he was going to allow that to be a combo. Like usually we prep mm. a ton of questions. This time I was like, if that could be the meat and he allows us to chew on it a little bit. He didn't. So we had to pivot. Yeah. He didn't. It, it, it he didn't, landed in a, he didn't give us nothing. Like yeah, you, yeah, we yeah. talked about it, but he, he didn't disregard it. How we thought. Yeah. Uh, outs above average guy. Interested in I that. calves off the team all of a sudden. Outs <laughs> all of above a sudden average that matters. <laughs> <laughs> how about that? Well, it's brought to you by DraftKings. The 82 game preseason is in the books for the National Basketball Association. It's finally time for the real season. Don't miss out on any of the NBA playoff action at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. From the play in tournament through the finals, DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered with same game parlays, live betting, odds boosts, and so much more. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code YANKS. New customers bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's code YANKS only at DraftKings. The crown is Jake's. Let's just get right into it. Jake might be here after the Boone uh, chat, or he might not. Stay tuned. Welcome back to another Bantering with Boone. Just myself and Booney today. Although, Jake, he may run in halfway through. I'm not sure. That would be pretty fun if he does, and we'll uh, have him ask you questions, see if he can guess which ones we've talked about or not talked about. All That'll right. be his task. Uh Two losses in a row, Boone. What the hell? It's the first time I think we're chatting after two in a row. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, obviously a tough loss in Cleveland where it's kind of a back-and-forth battle and, um, you know, just couldn't hang on in the end. And uh, and then last night, you know, I mean, Chris Bassett, just, you know, credit to him, he kind of shut us down there and um, – you know, Luis obviously struggled with with command and and strike throwing, but but you know was able to get us through five and keep us in the game and give us a chance. We just couldn't couldn't mount much yesterday. The 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 double when the double header happens and then you guys change is that when the Lewis Heel plan comes together because you get Petit to be the twenty seventh man and what was the thinking behind pushing yeah, so- Heel? So we could have we could have kept Luis on Saturday with Clark Schmidt because obviously then Clark gets bumped, but then we wouldn't have gotten through our rotation before the off day. So and you can't access the twenty seventh man, um, you know, on Wednesday. So we would have had to, you know, option a pitcher and come up with something for Wednesday. So it lined up pretty well for us and and you know and with any of our pitchers, but especially Luis, you know anytime we can get an extra day or two and, you know, as he's coming back from, you know, being injured a year ago, um, you know, you take that. What was the, the, the pitch calling? I, I didn't miss, I missed the post game. So I don't know if you talked about it already, but uh, you know, the broadcast and our text messages were like, why isn't he throwing the slider? Was that don't show it first time through get to it the second time, or was that he didn't think he and exited the bullpen with a bad feel for it or what was going on? Do you know what was going on with the pitch? No, no. I mean, it was, 
you know, it's always a pitch. It's probably his third pitch. Um, you know, but I think the biggest issue for him was just not being able to be in command and, and, um, you know, so he's backed into a corner some and, uh, you know, I mean, one of the takeaways is obviously, you know, we need to get better from a strike throwing and, and, you know, getting in the zone more and dictating more counts there. But, you know, the, there's also a takeaway of, you know, look what you just went through out there and you're able to get through five innings against a good offense with only three runs allowed. It's a testament to how hard you are to hit. So, you know, the critical nature of just being in the strike zone more regularly. And, and you know, with that, there'll be given days where the slider's a little more usage, uh, but the changeup's probably his number two pitch right now and certainly the best feel for it from a secondary standpoint. All right. I yeah. The slider's pretty good, though, in my opinion. The changeup is nice. He had one back-to-back fastball, then changeup to Turner. And you're like, hey, that's, that's what happens when you throw strikes in the zone because that was, that was nasty tunneling, as they say. Are you fr- did you freeze? Oh, back. Yeah. Did, did we freeze? Did you freeze? I froze. I don't know. It all froze. Okay. Here we go. Oh. Well, oh. The, yeah. So what, what was the, uh, the double down the line uh, or the single down the line by uh, uh, Kirk? Was that, a, was that a slider or a changeup? I think it might have been a slider. Yeah, I think that was a slider. He came out throwing yeah. sliders the third time through, basically. He opened up the third inning uh, with, like, yeah. three sliders in the first four pitches, and then he did get got on one. Yeah, I mean, in, in the end, he got a little bit better towards the end. Um, I think he got real t- – I think he got tired at the very end. And that last hitter was kind of going through on fumes a little bit, but, um, you know, he kept at it. And and the biggest thing is, you know – you know, my message with Luis is, man, you got to you got to live in the moment and the next pitch. You know, I think we've seen him get a little bit, um, you know, frustrated out there and and that can leak into, you know, the next three pitches. And, you know, you got to just focus on execution and, and remembering like it's a good testament to how difficult you are to hit. Like you, you've got elite stuff when you're in the strike zone consistently. Yeah, I, I, it is noticeable sometimes he wants a lot of the pitches, all the pitches. Bassett had a couple where he was frustrated as well, so I, I didn't think it was egregious, like, umpiring last night. I didn't really notice that. No, I didn't, I didn't think so either. Yeah. Um, with with, um, with uh, a little, 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 get my thoughts together, I'm going to ask a fun question, and then I'm going to ask a question that I actually want to have a conversation about see where you're at with. Have you been barking in the dugout? Have you barked yet? I have not been barking. Okay. Do you enjoy the barking? I do. I do. There was one the other day when Rizzo fouled the ball off his foot. You know, it, you know, it took a few seconds to kind of gather himself, but you could tell it hurt, you know, foot or shin or whatever. And right away, Verdugo starts barking, but the whole bench starts barking. And like, it's a good, tough spot hurt. for Rizzo. Yeah. Dogs don't get hurt. Oh shit. That's funny. It was pretty funny. So yeah, I I enjoy it. It's, it's definitely a a little rallying thing and, um, you know, something that's kind of brought the guys together on. Does anyone have like a standout bark? I don't know that. I I, I, I just kind of hear it off to the side a little bit. Unfortunately, I come from a long line of barkers. My dad and my grandpa, they just would drive around neighborhoods barking at other dogs, sounding like dogs. So, the O'Briens, wow. we have a, yeah, I could probably do it. I don't, they're, they were, they're a little nut job. Anyway, yeah. the real conversation I want to get into today and I want to see where your head's at is the infield defense. Uh, mm-hmm. There's been a lot of errors. There's mm-hmm. been flashes of good. Like Volpe, I think has looked really great. I think he's actually looked really aggressive. Um, Rizzo is the one that stands out because right now he's, you know, Rizzo, he's got a long tenured uh, career of being an outstanding defenseman and some of the plays that we've seen him make forever just haven't been made this season and it's a little odd is it something that you talk to him about whatever talk to him about or like you know what do you got on what's going on there not really it's like you know tackling your daily work you know defense 
you don't associate like offense and that you can get in a little bit of a funk over there. You know, when you're, when you're playing at a really high level, you're just playing free and easy and confidence and you don't make a couple of plays that you're used to making, you know, you got to kind of work through that. Um, but I mean, it's been one of his calling cards throughout his career and, and I'm confident will continue to be, um, you know, he's missed a couple of scoops that he would normally make. It's part of it. You kind of work through it and, it's just a, a few a few plays here early that are, you know, part of the weirdness of baseball. But I'm not worried about Riz at first, and and I think his body of work when we look up at the end will will be excellent. What about the rest of the infield as a whole? There's I think every position has two or three errors now, and then there's been just a lot of double plays not turned that I don't know. I would I would I assume would be turned. Mm-hmm. We hate. We had to, we threw one away in that Cleveland game, and then Volpe ate one because he had an odd transfer on it. Uh, right. That, that seems like something you'd love to clean up as the year goes on. Yeah, I mean, Glaber had the one. Uh, what was it? Friday, the first game of that double header. You know, where he had the easy step on the bag and just threw it away, and obviously not something you want. So I, I mean, yeah, I mean, got got to complete the play, and then. I mean, the one where on the transfer, the the nailer one, a great play by Glaber to kind of lay out and actually put a great throw. And then just in a play where you got to be perfect on the transfer, we, you know, he didn't he didn't make the transfer clean. Um, you know, Volpe coming across the bag, but, you know, Volpe's obviously been phenomenal so far at short. Um, overall, like. When we look at our def, I'm confident our infield defense is going to be. It's already been a strength. I think outs above average. I think we're in the top five in the league right now. Uh, you know, you, you're going to get DJ back in the mix. Are you an outs uh, above average guy now? No, but I be- saw it because I like I outs. I like for infield. I, I like that. I think it's. I think it's one of the pieces of the pie that's interesting. Like it's tells a tells a little bit of a story. Um, I think we're, I think we're up there pretty high on that. So I I think we're an excellent defensive infield team. We've made a few mistakes, part of it, especially early, small sample, but, but actually in a small sample, I think we're kind of pretty high in the league overall infield defense. Yeah. They got Volpe at two outs above average birdie. He's he's not with you right now, but one Glaber one Rizzo minus one and Cabrera minus three. I think Cabrera has missed a couple easy ones, which I actually love his ownership of them afterwards. Just he's been like, not my yeah. bad, sorry. But he's also made some nice plays, and Birdie made a couple really nice ones to his right, which helped him. Yeah. So I mean, look, we you know Oswaldo is an excellent defender, and and over time will be, especially at third. Um, you know, Birdie, like you said, that's in line with who he's been in his career. DJ, when he comes back, I would expect to be an excellent defender. Um, and, you know, Volpe continues to do his thing. So, yeah. My yep. my concern with the defense is compounded with the, the bullpen right now. It is very weird for me because it's not a strikeout bullpen. Um, the Yankees uh, bullpen has... Uh, the second lowest uh, strikeout rate in all of baseball, 17%. And the Mm -hmm. lowest with two strikes. So we're not putting them away with two strikes. It's more balls in play, which leads to... Back to, back to, back to, like, of course, you want it all. I mean, you want this, you want this, but we're making an argument, like, our infield defense is actually good. It's actually good to this point. And I think we'll even be better. So... I think we're a team that should be equipped to, you know, hopefully take advantage of that. But also, hopefully, as time goes by, we do get some more swing and miss as well. Yeah, I mean, I know that's a lot of sinker sliders, and sinkers are ball and play pitch. So it is a little by design that the the bullpen, what Blake's got everyone doing is, you know, that pitch is designed for ground balls, which leads to defense. So I'd like both to grow. And you're right, we do want everything. Like, yes. you guys win your first five series as fans. Okay, we're going to be a playoff team. Now we're going to nitpick even more. Right. So, so and, that, you know, and, and frankly, you know, as 
as a team and as a staff, you're always trying to gain every advantage and edge and improve on the margins, you know, as you, as the season continues to unfold. With birdie going down, um, until DJ's back, your roster, your lineup's kind of set as far as starters go. You know, I Birdie was getting the starts versus lefties. We saw that in the Marlins series. As Waldo basically in, a starter here until at third base? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. That's awesome. I, I love uh, his at-bats and his presence in the mound uh, this whole season. How could you not? H- yeah. How do you navigate when DJ comes back? The, the last we heard was he's going to have a rehab assignment soon, maybe after this yeah, so I trip? would expect probably sometime this this weekend um, he would start that. Um, we get back obviously we get back from Toronto tomorrow. We have the off day Thursday, so I, I think DJ's looks like he's trending to be ready to play in games. You know, as early as this weekend. And then uh, usually you don't give away too much when we get ahead. But when DJ returns, if everyone else is here, what's what's that rotation? Have you even thought about it? That's a, it's still a ways off. So okay. we'll, the season will declare itself to you all the time. So we'll just, I'll be excited to get, um, you know, obviously DJ back with us uh, in a really steady presence with us. And, um, you know, and then birdie behind him to where, you know, hopefully we get more and more whole as we go and, and, and the bench options become better and, and all those kind of things. What went into Stanton not playing game one in Toronto? Is that turf and not wanting Judge out there for three in a row? Or is that matchups? Yeah, so it was just basically, yeah, not wanting to have Judge play all three on defense. So I'm picking one day to have him. And then what's the best day probably for, uh, you know, Grish to be in there, lefty today, Kikuchi, Gosman uh, tomorrow, you know, more neutral, you know, uh, Bassett's probably the biggest, you know, split guy they have from, from the three we're going to face this weekend. So just picking that day. Um, and then want to be mindful of not overdoing it and being smart with Stan too, you know, is because I feel like he's in a really good place too and, and want to keep that going. So Stan will be in there today. Will he be behind judge again? Same lineup Kikuchi pitched to, uh, at the home opener. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That was an interesting game. That was right before Stan like started going and Kikuchi's mm-hmm. curveball neutralized Soto and Rizzo pretty nice. He had a, a nice sharp curve and then he walked judge twice to get yeah. to Stan. Kikuchi's, you know, he's been, you know, back half of last season pitched really well and he's off to a really good start um, this year too. He's throwing the ball really well. He's tough when he's on because he's got that, you know, he's got real four seam that he can pitch up with, but the secondary stuff is real too. So, uh, you know, he's, he's a challenge, uh, but hopefully this time, uh, we can have better success with him. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of traffic last time. I think twice he, they pitched around judge to get to Stanton and the inning ended, but now Stanton's been gone going since then. So I hope they try that again and it gets thrown right in their faces. And then there's a shot of you laughing uh, in the dugout. And, and, Big G, even even these last few games, he hasn't got any. Oh, oh, he hasn't got a lot of uh, results. Um, but I I felt like the Cleveland series, the two games there, like man, he was kind of on everything. Just missed a few balls that he hit, you know, for flyouts. Um, so feel good about where G's at. Hopefully, hopefully he can catch one today. When you moved uh, Glaber down and you bought brought Volpe to lead off, you had said it was more to give Glaber kind of arrest he was pressing his underlying stats when he was at leadoff were actually pretty good there's quality the quality at bats were there um the pitches per plate appearance and he was getting on base every game be, via walk or single he just didn't have much more since moving it seems he's pressing like in my opinion it seems like he's those underlying stats have tinkered the wrong way do you think yeah. there's any way he's pressing more now trying because he was like in leadoff mindset to me it felt he was taking pitches, grinding. Now he's yeah. swinging a little more and he still hasn't found second bet second base on a hit. Yeah. I mean, I'm probably least worried about Glaber okay. offensively. Like Glaber's going to hit and, and he's, he's been close all year. I do feel like right before I moved him down that weekend, I feel like he was, 
I could feel him chasing results a little bit. He and I even had a conversation about it. And he, he's, he's get, Glaber's going to hit, man. Like, I, I'm not worried about it. And once he gets going in the middle of our order, you know, I feel like there's going to be that opportunity to drive in a lot of runs. And he's on that short list of guys you want up when he's going well. So he's close. Um, um, you know, smoked a hit last night again. You know, it's just uh, he's 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 getting there. He, and you're probably – and it's one of those things where you're early in the season. What are we, 16, 17 games in um, where, you know, even really good hitters and good players, you know, you're not off to quite the start you want. You feel that a little bit, and you you got to just really focus on the at-bat. So I do feel like he's doing a pretty good job of that, and I do feel like it's a matter of time. But I, he's definitely not a guy I worry about over the long haul, like, of what he's going to be offensively. It'd be nice to pop an extra base hit sooner or later so it doesn't become yeah. a bigger thing in his head. Did you have a season where you you – had to wait a long time for first homer, first like double, and it just became a storyline, at least for you. Uh, I, I had a number of seasons where I got out of the gate a little bit slow, you know, that kind of four for 30, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't remember a long home run drought or extra base hit drought necessarily, uh, or like being a thing, but there, there are a handful of seasons where you got off a little slow. All right. I think he changed his – there was a vlog where Galeber did where he changed his bat weight. I don't know if it's true, but in spring training, he put out a video and he changed his bat weight to lighter, faster swing. Right. I think he's I think he's in line with what he's been using. All right. Would you – that thing – would that be something that you would want to or care about if guys were changing equipment? Or do you even know? Like, do you know – I have a genuine question. Do you know, like – DJ uses a heavy bat. Judge use this, or is that not your alley? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat familiar what they all use, and actually, we're getting way into you know as an organization, you know, bats and you know how you measure it and different swings and you know is there a way of you know saying this guy should use this kind of bat and those kind of things. So interesting stuff that getting into. Did you use the same bat your whole career? I think Jeter used the same oh. bat his whole career. Yeah, he did. Uh, no, I, I switched. I even switched uh, length and weight at, in the middle of my career. And yeah. Would you ever switch based on a matchup? Is that anything any player does? Yeah, I used I used a, a certain type of bat against righties and a different bat against lefties. It was different length or weight? Just different balance kind of okay. different structure of the bat. What you use against Wakefield? Do you remember? Yeah, so that was at a time. So I I, I was kind of 34, 32 um, the first several years of my career. And then in 2002, I got off to a terrible start. The first month and a half, two months of the season was really struggling. And I grabbed Adam Dunn's bat on deck going up there. I'm like, let me try yours, which was I went from 34, 32 to his was like a 34 and a half, 31 and a half. I flew out hit the ball pretty well and started using it from there. So I was 34 and a half, 31 and a half to 32 ounces. So a little longer, but a little lighter. And then when I got to the Yankees and I was using that, Bernie actually got me to use a little heavier bat. So I went from like, I still had 34 and a half, but I was using more like that 32 and a half ounces. Um, and then, when I left the Yankees, I got hurt, missed the year, came back, back the rest of my career. I was kind of in that 34, 31 and a half, 32 ounce. All right. Alfonso Soriano was, he used heavier bat. It was heavier than it was long. It was like a 32, 34, 34, 36. Yeah. Or something like that. I remember that. It always looked crazy. big too. That was pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, Trent Grisham gets on base and then gets thrown out. Yeah. He's now been on base twice. And he got picked off and then stolen. For his mindset, do you just give him like the red light next time he gets on? It's like let's let's keep it clean. Or no, do you give him the no. steal sign and say let's let's do it? Yeah, we play the game. I mean, okay. it's, depending on the matchup, like you don't you don't put your head in the sand. You don't turtle and and Grish ain't afraid. So we play. We gotta we gotta play the game. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'd rather just so steal to get there. It's not give them. It's not give them the. 
steal the steal. It's if it's if it's the right spot and we get the right jump, then yeah, we're we're not gonna run from that. In the in the loss on Sunday, there was uh, the Glaber bunt to bring up Verdugo, which I actually, in live time and retrospect, I still like that move. I'm a fan of it. I it, it's a bummer because Glaber can hit. But Verdugo doesn't strike out. He puts the ball in play. And three runs versus two yeah. is so different. Yeah, I like I like the I, – I actually liked it, um, obviously. <laughs> um, you know, once once we we're up two there and with Verdugo behind him, that's going to put it in play. I feel like if you can get a third run there, that's a – you know, that's a big deal. And, you know, obviously Doogie hit it right on the ground and Naylor made a pretty good play. So – um yeah i mean i mean i mean i think there's a case both ways on on that but i had no issue with it i mean if it's the second run if you're up one i don't think i'd like it but i think you sell out for a third run in extra innings the way it is so a home run can't tie the game yeah i agree all right no no problem with it so stands back judge and center and then that's the lineup Trevi, yeah, Trevi, Trevi, in there. Trevi, get Trevi hitting the home run, banging a lefty, and then the hit off Class A, pretty nice. See him get going. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That was, I mean, that was that was a bolt he hit. That's a big part of the ballpark where he hit that ball out, yeah. especially when kind of cutting across a little bit. That was good to see, and then and then yeah, getting us going against Class A there. You guys have uh, a, Class A has a blown save against the Yankees three years in a row now. So I kind of. Yeah, we- We've done a pretty good job of, of getting it because he is, you know, he's on that count on one hand probably the, of the game's best at the back there. And, you know, guys, they've done a good job against him and getting to him a little bit. I think he's awesome. I think yeah. Cashman should try to trade for him. <laughs> okay. Agree or disagree? It would be nice. Uh, uh, there goes. He's the, a guard. All right. Uh, Jake has a trivia question for you that he texted in. Um, okay. He said, uh, what's the name of your brother who played Major League Baseball? Um, I'm not answering that. Okay. I thought it might have been a, a too personal, but that's what he said. My trivia question was going to be, what's the name of his brother who played Major League Baseball? I said, I'll ask. That's all I could do in that scenario. Brett. That'd be Brett. <laughs> he knows he's been making him too hard. Yeah, yeah he made <laughs> he him too hard bad. recently. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, let's go. Win the series the hard way. Six in a row. First time since 2010. Oh, first time since a long time, actually. Five in a row was 2010. Let's try and get one tonight, and then we'll go from there. I'll take both. Like you said, okay. you guys are – we're getting greedy now as fans. We want it all. Coming out this weekend? Mm, I don't know. Maybe. Should I? Sterling Saturday. Sterling Saturday. It's crazy. Yeah. We, won't, we were going to open the show with his call of your, your walk-off. But he was like doing dual play by play, and he actually wasn't Charlie. doing play by play. So, Charlie Steiner. Yeah. He did say the one sentence was, How beleaguered can a player be? Which I had to Google that word, but it's pretty yeah. good. Means you were in a tough spot. All right. Thanks, Booney. Thank you. Take care. So, yeah. And there you have it. That was Bantering with Boone, episode number XX. You insert the number once you figure it out. Jake's still not here. Just me and the Beebs. I thought that was that was fun. It was, uh, I don't know. He was, he wasn't, he didn't disregard the issues as much as I thought. Although he did say the infield defense is actually a plus, And I think the relief pitchers not striking guys out might be a benefit. But I think he knows deep down, hey, it's a little bit not yeah. what we want. Thinks um, it will be where it needs to be. I think that's genuine, but... I do believe him when he says he's not worried about Glaber. And I think Glaber's a little bit earned that. I think he said that one last year about Glaber going up and down in the order. Like, I'm not worried about Glaber's approach to the plate. Like, yeah. Glaber hitting, I'm not worried about. So I hope uh, hope that holds true. Everything else seems pretty good. I think uh, I need Stan to get Kikuchi tonight. I don't want him to walk Judge. It'd go a long way. And then to get to go to Stanton again, which they did. They did last time. That wouldn't be fun. Last time they were able to just like straight dodge him. Yeah. And ju- judge, that is. And yes, they eat, just walked. He just, he just walked, walked around Kikuchi. The equipment conversation, he seemed to be 
into that. Some guys like equipment stuff. Some guys don't. He had a lot of bat changes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like hearing the stories of how that happened. The The actual measurements don't mean a whole lot to me once we get bigger than, like, what I could have used in high school. But That's similar to high school numbers, of, yeah. right? Like 32, 34, 32, like different 32, 30, whatever it is. Yeah, there's – yeah, because yeah, you could – in you can school, weight like, it kind of however you want. I'm very dated. Would drop three, right? Yeah. That was what that was school, what I had. That was what a high school was, right? Yeah, and and I, I never played in a wood league. I remember when my brother was playing. He was 11 years old, and they had drop 12s. Mm. And me and Jake did like a home run derby with those bats, and it was just like this is so stupid. <laughs> we get hit it so far. It's like spring. You can loaded. swing real hard. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. Well. Um. All right. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. We'll be back. Anything else Boone gave us to chew on? Not um, really. I really want to get into... I get, not really. Like, uh, I guess just the, a thing we hadn't considered with the heel poteet thing was that, like, they were going to need another starter at some point this week. Yeah, and so they would have had to option someone. Using poteet as the 27th man was just the easiest choice and you don't have to yeah. sacrifice anything. Because on so. the double header day you get to bring up a pitcher and yeah. the other days you would have to option someone to bring someone up. So it does make a lot of yeah. sense. I, I thought there was more that makes it like, okay, there's no yeah. other choice. Like, I like, thought it was more skip him, save him a little bit, or like maybe we want heel to face like, Toronto and not Guardian. It was none of that. It was no. just strictly like side benefit of like giving heel and Rodon yeah. like one more day, sure. But Twice now, Boone has mentioned that he'll needs to stop letting missed call in in perceived missed calls affect mm. him on the mound, which is yeah. uh, for Boone on the show. That's a little bit of like that's a that's a poking s- a little bit. You know, hey, he needs to stop that. Yeah, and that's like an issue. And like while our chat was going last, like. We're seeing it now. The book on heel has always been like, I don't know if he throws enough strikes to start. That's like what his minor league scouting report has been. So we're getting to see a taste of it. Boone's talking about it a little bit. Uh, hoping he, he cleans up because the stuff's nasty and like fun. Yeah. It seems like when he misses the zone, he, he blames the ump. Or, or a missed call is definitely, you can see it irking him. For a guy who like already potentially struggles with command, clean that up. Yeah. Your reaction to stuff is all you can control, you know? When DJ comes back, that's very interesting. But it is wise of Boone to really not think about it until that Until it's happens. like within a couple days. Yeah. I think it just fucks Judge out of DH days because I think when DJ comes back, DJ, Stanton, Glaber, and Oswaldo Cabrera are in a funky, you play three days and then you sit, yeah. platoon, where Glaber would go to DH and DJ would play the field, or DJ would DH, Glaber would play the field on Stan out days when Stan's in, just one of Oswaldo, uh, DJ, and Glaber will sit. Yeah, they're, and they like haven't done this, and I guess they haven't had an ability to do it yet anyway this year. But even last year, like Rizzo. It, DJ being back would open Dude, up like one day Rizzo off a week can for use Rizzo. A day. Rizzo can use, it seems like Rizzo could use a day off. Yeah, he... Like the... The railing ball was odd. Railing ball is odd. It seems like he could use a day in general. And like Rizzo is getting old in baseball terms. Like getting him a day off is not crazy. One day off every week. He has a history so of So yeah, that that's, that's also like, helps them out. That I, th- I think it would open up, up the chance to do more of that. Wow. Which does change the lineup a lot, and I like how consistent it is right now. But yeah, it we'll would change the consistency, but it's a good reason to be able to change it. So we'll get there when we get there. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe to the channel if you have not. Uh, we'll see you for the series recap on whatever Tomorrow, it is. I think tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Go Yanks, Telegrams. Go Yankees. Slap ball tonight. Me and Jake on the call. Warehouse games. Playoffs this start Sunday. So catch up now and you'll be caught up. Ooh, Jake pants the ref. <laughs>